composers were always working with the idea of strong and weak. They would even go so far as sometimes to say good and bad. The idea of strong and weak can apply to a number of things. It can be the beats within a measure, it can be the beats within one beat, and it can also be harmonic choices, the weight of measures throughout a phrase. We can really use the idea of strong and weak in many musical applications. Most Baroque instruments naturally have strong and weak built into them. The Baroque bow, for example, will naturally get a stronger down bow and a weaker up bow, so we already have that built into our arsenal. This means naturally we're going to put more weight and more sound on the down bow, and less weight on the weaker up bow. Within one measure, we have stronger beats and weaker beats. If we have a measure of 4-4, four, four, the first and the third beats will be strong, and the second and the fourth beats will be weak. For bowing patterns, this works out nicely because we'll be down bow on the first and third beats and up bow on the second and fourth. If we take a musical example of something written in 4-4, four, four, we can hear exactly how the strong and weak comes into play. If we start by just taking four quarter notes, we can look at how it lays naturally in the bow. Now we'll take an actual bass line using quarter notes and hear how the strong and weak divides up this way. to take the same idea in a measure of 3-4, we're going to have a slightly different division of strong and weak. We'll be strongest on the first beat, weaker on the second, and weakest on the third beat. This generally means we want to use a down-up-up up bow stroke so that we're keeping our first beat the strongest. The tendency is to want to give an accent on the third beat to lead into the first beat. Despite the desire to want to accent the third beat, we want to make sure that the first beat is still always the strongest. Now let's hear 3-4 measure in context. We can go even further and subdivide beats into stronger parts of the beat and weaker parts of the beat. This is easy to see when we look at eighth notes. If we're playing a line of eighth notes, we're going to be up bow on the second eighth of each beat, meaning that those up bows are going to be weak, and the second half of the beat is going to be weaker than the first half. rules were generally recognized by all composers composing in the Baroque period, they're simply rules and that means there are always going to be exceptions. But it's great to approach your repertoire with these rules in mind first and then decide if you want to make an educated exception. There's so much more to talk about with strong and weak, so if you have any thoughts or questions be sure to leave them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching! If you like these videos be sure to subscribe!